Hello, I'm Kim Bailey and I'm in the bush, as you can see. I wanted to take this opportunity to bring back up to speed some of our friends from around the world who were so concerned for their Australian counterparts during the recent bushfires here in Australia. Many of you saw horrific vision on the news and through other social media about the fire situation that started in October 2019 and carried through until pretty much February 2020. This area here, this is close to where I am located, was burned out New Year's Eve and New Year's Day and the, the road that, that goes past us here was closed for three days whilst they contained the fire, didn't put it out and, and in Australian terms very rarely does a fire go out. They are contained in certain areas. What I did want to show you today though is how this area has recovered. So we're talking, this is the end of April, we're talking four months period of time and even though the area was very severely burnt, it was a, what we call a hot fire, so it was quick and very hot rather than a slow burn that just sort of travels through at its own pace. It raced through here, burnt very hot and was moving on to the next area. And you'll see some shots around of some of the areas that haven't recovered as yet, but some areas have. And I particularly wanted to highlight for you these. Locally known as Black Boys, it's a Zansaria, and I'll spell it for you on the screen. The foliage itself, often that's all we see, and then the flower spike comes out, not every year, those of you who are at the World Show in India will have seen the Australian exhibit had some Xanthoria in it with the spent flower heads. These are flower heads that haven't yet flowered. So they're green as they grow and then they burst into flower. And I'm just looking around to see if we can find one that's in flower. We'll go to one that's in flower shortly and we'll have a look at the flower. But what is interesting when you pan back through this area, these weren't here in October last year. They have appeared after the fire. The seeds from these flower spikes will fall and they will get buried into the earth and they will sit there sometimes literally for thousands of years, but certainly hundreds of years before a fire comes through and opens up the seeds so that they can grow. And I first noticed this about four weeks ago and I thought, gee, there's a lot of grass, we call them grass trees as well, grass trees in there that I haven't noticed before. Now I drive this road quite frequently so I would see them if they were here. But literally the ground here is covered in them now. They have come up after the fire. They have been germinated as a result of the fire. And they've grown to this stage with the foliage and then they've thrown up the flower spike because a fire tells them that it's time to reproduce themselves. And so they'll throw up the flower spike, they'll flower, the seeds will drop and these, these, probably two thirds of these, will die back and not be seen of again. Some of them will continue to grow and continue to flourish just to maintain the, the ground cover that is here now. But for the most part, they will disappear and it will take another fire before another flood of growth happens and we see more seedlings fall. So just an opportunity for you to see how much our bush recovers, how quickly it recovers. We're going to have a little walk through and have a look at some of the trees that were affected and how the regrowth happened on the trees themselves. Some of them look completely black and you wouldn't think that anything could happen, but there is regrowth happening. Some unfortunately have suffered the stresses more than others and haven't recovered. And it is still quite dangerous, as you'll see there's fallen trees around here. They have fallen after the fire. They don't necessarily fall during the fire, but as the ground becomes less stable around them because some of the trees around them are dying, then the trees fall. This is another reason we think that these particular ground covers come up is to strengthen the area around the trees. You know, it's some symbiotic relationship between the trees and the grass cover in our natural bush. But let's have a wander now and see some of the regrowth that's happened. And I'll see if I can find you one of these that's actually in flower because it's very different to what you see here. And I'm shooing away the flies as I do it. So let's keep walking and we'll find something else to look at.
here we are. We found some that are in flower. And you can see that it's a very white or creamy coloured flower. The stamens are sticking out. There's insects all around it. It's obviously very sweet. But it's the sort of flower that you wouldn't expect to see on something like this. It's quite spectacular. You'll see in some of the other shots the flower stalks that have been bent as they've been growing and so we get these wonderful shapes in them as well. When the flower dies off, the seed pod comes out and so that again that's a different look to the flower spike. It's a very dark, hard surface. Probably six months later, these will start to fall from the base. And so we, we gather them at that point as flower arrangers and we use the stalk as much as we would the flower spike itself. The foliage is very much like steel grass. It's, it's even sharper on the edges, so you have to be fairly careful when you're using it. But we would use it in much the same way as we would use steel grass. There's another one over here that's an older flower, so it's much taller. We'll go over there and have a look at that one. And you can see how much taller this one is. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's been in the ground longer. It actually hasn't. And I can tell that by the base. Because there's no, no trunk on the base of the grass itself that's growing, it tells me that it's a very new plant. When they're older, they develop a trunk. They grow up and they grow probably about an inch a year, very slow grower when they do start to grow. And so we would know by looking around this area that these are all new plants. They're, they've all come up since the fire. And in some cases you can see the fire, the darkness of the soil around them where it's burnt so hot, hot enough for the seeds to germinate and to burst into life. Because after the fire, in February we did get flooding rain which was very welcome in many areas and has helped this area regenerate.
What I also wanted to show you today is what happens with the trees. We've talked about the grass trees, about the xanthorea, but, but obviously a lot of these other older growth trees were burnt as well. And you can see with this one, the bark has taken the brunt of the fire. And to all intents and purposes, if you looked at that, you'd think, well, it's past its use by date, it's no good anymore. But if we pan up and have a look, there's actually, this is what new, well, it happens. New growth comes virtually months. Remember, we're just four months out of the fire, months away from the fire event itself, and we get this new growth happening. And if you pan around to the trees behind, you'll see that they're in the same position. Very much the trunks are all burnt, but you can see the new growth happening all the way up the trunks, right to the, the top story where there's still burnt leaves, but there's also new growth as well. As you can see, this one has suffered as well with the fire, but once again, we have the regrowth happening just four months after the fire. So it's happy enough, you can see that, that the base, the trunk is quite burnt, but there's regrowth through the burnt parts. And that's often, interesting for us to use you know rather than use the fallen timber the, the burnt timber is to actually try and incorporate recreate if you like this kind of look in some of our designs so we'll use a piece of burnt bark a burnt burnt bit of timber and somehow inside it we'll insert the regrowth that, because we know that that's what it looks like when we come to the bush So there we have it, a, a bit of an insight into what happens after a bushfire in Australia. I wanted to make this video in part to thank so many of you who expressed your concern and sent your well wishes to us all in Australia during that time of trial over our summer. I hope you have enjoyed some of the insights that I've given you today and I look forward to seeing you again soon. I'll do it again. That's the bloody wire!